And with it, our magazine show, Inside Grand Prix. After a turbulent winter, we predict a whole bundle of thrills and emotion. Finally, it's race time again. But before we deal with Shumi and Co, here comes a plentiful helping of Oriental Flair. Welcome to Bahrain and the first race of the season. This is how people imagine the Orient. Riders in long robes, sheiks with falcons on their arm. Racy belly dancers, the elders drinking tea at the market, the souk, and, to go with it all, a subtropical climate. Since 2004, in addition to the traditional Mersin, the kingdom has also heard a very different sound. Well, obviously, we're very passionate about motorsports, and, and you know, the credit goes back to the leadership, you know, His Majesty uh, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Highness the Prime Minister Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and the Crown Prince uh, Sheikh Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. And all of them, I think, had this vision of how to bring Bahrain into the future. Um, and uh, it is important to let people know where Bahrain is first before you have that plan. And I think the Grand Prix and the Formula One circuit has achieved that objective because after 2004, uh, happily, when we do say I'm from Bahrain, they say that's where the Formula One races, and we say yes. This will be the seventh appearance of the Formula One circus at Bahrain's International Race Circuit, when the F1 season begins with a race in the desert. Taking part for the second time, Sebastian Buemi. For the 22-year-old Toro Rosso driver, it's almost a home game, as he spends a lot of his free time in Bahrain. As you can see, it's always sunny and warm here, and uh, I mean, I really like it. You can train, you can just do whatever you want, when you want, and this is important. I also have uh, quite a bit of family around here, and uh, you know, it's quite in the middle of, uh, of the world now, and uh, it's quite central, and it's a good place to relax. Bahrain, meaning two seas in Arabic, is today a country where two cultures combine the traditional Orient fusing with Western modernity. The new Mercedes GP driver Nico Rosberg enjoys the flair of the souk and the atmosphere of the narrow lanes in the capital Manama. I always mingle with the crowd and I check out those places where less tourists are around. I'm very interested in experiencing different mentalities. That's very nice. Formula One changes its appearance every year with new rules and new faces. We'll be introducing the debutants later, but here's one for starters. In the AT&T Williams, the name Rosberg has changed to Hulkenberg. It's been a really long winter for me. I haven't been racing for half a year, so I'm really happy to get started now. The calm in Manama is over for now. Within hours, tranquil Bahrain is going to become the focal point of the noisy Formula One world. Later in setup, sensation, fascination, speculation. The top teams. Now, a bit more on the Bahrain Sakia circuit. Welcome to the new Formula One season and welcome to the first Grand Prix at the Bahrain Sakir circuit. Like every year, there are a few new regulations the drivers and the teams have to get to grips with. The most important is definitely that no refueling is allowed anymore during the entire length of the race. The engineers had to find a solution though, a much bigger fuel tank in the cars. The drivers will now have to deal with a very heavy car during the race and, of course, a decreasing fuel load so the car gets lighter and lighter. The balance may change. Another obvious change is the front tires are about two and a half centimeters narrower, which will affect the car's setup an awful lot. Also, the minimum weight of a Formula One car is now 620 kilogram, 15 kilogram more than last year. Nico, as a rookie in Formula One, it's all new to you anyway. Yeah, that's true. A lot of things are new, but not the Bahrain circuit. I've raced here before in different series, and I really like the track. It's very exciting to, to, to race here, especially in the last corner. It's very important to get a good exit because there's a long straight after there, and if you don't get a good exit, you can, can get overtaken easily. So uh, 
a lot of things to look at at the circuit. One thing that's new, not just for rookie Nico Hilkenberg, is that Bahrain's circuit has been made longer. That's been done because there are now more cars in the race than in the past. The issue of sand, however, is still there. A real challenge for the teams and engineers. Well, it's very important because if you get contaminants inside a racing engine, the very, only very fine particles can have a big detrimental effect on the engine. And this is mainly because engines use plane bearings. They don't use rolling element bearings for crankshafts. So a plane bearing has a very tiny tolerance to, to uh, contaminant. So if you get any sand or any debris like that inside an engine, it will probably blow up. New teams, new rules, new configurations. Rarely has a season promised to be as thrilling as this one does. A lot of things are new to me, but I'm very excited about the season. Right, good luck to you in Manama and all the best for the year. Coming up, the latest from the Formula One scene. And now, to new and familiar faces and their teams. Formula One and its so-called outsiders. Nobody wants to just bring up the rear. The aim is always to make up ground in the fight for points. Inside Grand Prix on the teams chasing the favorites. First stop, Toro Rosso. For the first time, the Italian team has had to create its vehicle design on its own. The days of being able to base things on the Red Bull design plans are over. And yet a closer look at the STR5 reveals that several things have been passed on from last year's Red Bull. The drivers, their confidence. It's a bit too early to speak about performance because we don't actually know what the car can do, but uh, why we are aiming for, for better than last year for sure. And they appear to be succeeding, with good test results in Jerez causing their rivals to take note. The team seems certain that this year they've got a fast and reliable car. Despite the name, Malaysian team Lotus Racing lines up on the grid with no direct connection to British car maker Lotus Cars. The aim, however, is to carry forward its racing tradition and team spirit. Heike Kovalainen and Jano Trulli will be in the cockpit. The team's declared intent to show the world they're up to the task. White and black packaging with red contents. It's a Ferrari engine powering the BMW Sauber team this year. While Munich car makers BMW have quit Formula One, they've nevertheless left their name and design behind. Amidst the whole confusion, a precise Swiss attempt at clarification. It's a tricky issue, isn't it? We registered as BMW Sauber. That's the name we raced under last year, the one we registered by and the one under which we're racing for now. It's not yet been decided at what point we'll apply to have the chassis name changed. Drivers Kamui Kobayashi and Pedro de la Rosa hope to be regularly in the points this year. Both see it as important to go into the season not competing with each other, but fighting as one. We will get on very well because I am experienced, I am very calm and uh, he's young and quick and you know I think as, as a package we will work well. Uh, he speaks very good English so that helps as well and so far it's been a very good relationship. Both have already hit the headlines with fast lap times in testing. The C29 can thus certainly be counted on for a surprise or two this year. On to another debutant, the Virgin Racing Team, made in Britain. 